ITP, we're back. It's been quite a while. Today, or for this series, I'm just going to be focusing on deep stack poker in tournaments, um, namely with antis in play. I guess pre anti isn't as big of a concern. So, yeah. And I've only been playing cash for quite a while. I haven't played an MTT in a pretty long time, so I thought this would be a great place to, you know, help out. I think there's spots where NTT players really struggle, and if you can apply these principles even to like 30, 40 big blind play, it uh, can be helpful. And we'll talk about some of those principles that do apply, if I can be good enough to find them. And uh, yeah, so we'll start with uh, this sound. So we open, he defends, board comes 8 8 7. Immediate thought is that this is a pretty bad board for us. I think he could defend like 8 5 off pretty often, 8 6 off, maybe even 8 4 off, 8 2 suited is for sure getting in there, right? So lots of, a lot more 8x than we do. So we're going to do quite a bit of checking. Um, and this hand, I think, is a very reasonable check, but also a reasonable bet with a gutter and a backdoor flush draw. So I'm fine with betting this one. Like a jack-9 off, I check a lot more often. You know, jack-9, no backdoor. So, um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think this is a board we're not betting that often. So he calls. So the question I ask here is, who is the 6 better for? And this is an important question. So think about his range, like what hands improve on that turn. So he can have 5-4 off, right? We don't have that. 9-5 uh, off, that's a hand he can have that we can't. He can have pocket 6s, which is a hand that we actually don't have because I'm not betting pocket 6s on the flop. 9-10 um, is a hand we both have. But and he might check raise, so we actually have a bit more nine ten than he does. And um, yeah, I think he could have a hand like eight six off. I could see maybe that one not check raising, just like bottom of his eight x range. So not so great for us, and we shouldn't be doing too much betting. However, we get to bet sometimes, and. What are the types of hands we want to bet? How many, you know, so I see this turn, it's a pretty bad turn. But I know we, we still have hands we want to bet. We still have a value range, right? We still have pocket six, we still have pocket sevens, we still have eight, seven off maybe, eight, seven suited. We still have um, nine, ten, we still have five, four suited if we bet it. We still have nine, five suited if we bet. So we need some value hands, we need some bluffs to throw in there, but not too many. So what are the type of hands you want? Clearly you want hard draws, and then I think this becomes the next best, an open-ender, and a 10, if a 10 comes, I actually beat a hand like 9-7, right, I still have a higher straight, so it's a pretty strong open-ender, and the next thing is we just can't bet big because of all the really strong hands in his range, so we end up going for a size like that, nice and small. He calls, so now what does his range become? So I think he has a pretty wide range, so you think about his 7x. I don't know that his 7x folds the turn. So 7x of hearts never folds the turn, right? His 9-7 never folds, 7-5 never folds, 10-7 never folds, if he has 7-4, I don't think that ever folds. And then, yeah, I'd, maybe he gets there with some bigger 7s. Um, it's important not to get hung up on exactly how many sevens he has. If you're not sure, uh, there's, you know, if you're in a hand, there's so much other th things to think about. He has some of the bigger sevens, and then you think about his six x. He could have six nine. He could have six ten. He could have six five. Maybe six four. Not really sure. So he has all those hands. Then he could have hands like ace x of hearts, king x of hearts, jack ten of hearts type of hands. He can have hands like ace nine right? He can have hands like pocket fives maybe. So a ton of weak hands. And then what are his strong hands? An 8x that still hasn't check raised yet? 
I guess that's possible. There's a few combos of that. Like, what that didn't check Gray's flop, then didn't check Gray's turn. Probably not that many. And then he has, then there's like straights that turn in check raise, like 5 4 and 9 5. 10 9 is a lot less likely, so maybe he has some straights. So when you're facing that type of range, a bet here, I think it's pretty obvious that those weak pairs are just make up the bulk of his range. And I think this makes this a pretty sweet bluff, bluff right here. And we don't have to bet too big, you know, three quarters pot or something like that. And uh, he ends up making the call and he calls with that hand, which is probably a good call. Uh, he has to defend a bunch of 7x to make this, to make us not just want to like bluff the fuck out of him. So not a bad play by him. I think he'd be better off not having the ace of hearts, but good call. Skip that hand. Alright, next hand. Guy opens for min. We call. So he checks back. And think about what are his most likely checkbacks in the spot. So, it's not that many flush draws, I don't think. I think most of those bet. Um, I think he can have like a 10-9 suited, 10-8 suited, jack-10 off type of hand, pocket nines, pocket eights, ace-jack to ace-king-high, no diamond, those type of hands, so even including like king-queen, king-jack type of hands, 7x, 7-8 suited, 7-6 suited, um, maybe occasional jack-9 or something like that, and uh... So to me, not that strong. I think the high card region makes up like a huge portion because like ace, king, ace, queen, for example, is just like 32 combos or something. Well, we have the queen blocker, so 29 combos. So that is pretty substantial and not that many flushes in his range, not that many 5-6 or jack-9 in my opinion. Um, he might bet a hand like pocket eight, so I think his range is pretty weak. And we have a pretty good bluffing hand, so we end up bluffing here. Queen diamonds jack. Curious if you guys can find other good bluffs here. And he calls. So what's his range for getting to the river? It's like 8-7 suited, pocket 9s, uh, pocket 8s maybe wouldn't even raise, maybe even jack 9 wouldn't raise. So he maintains all those types of hands, but then he also has hands like Ace of Diamonds Jack, Ace of Diamonds Queen, Ace of Diamonds King, or Ace King of Diamonds, Ace with the Queen of Diamonds, Ace with the Jack of Diamonds. So that's not good. And the Ace rarely hits us, right? Like how many hands do we bet on the turn where this Ace helps? Not that many. It's like just our Ace of Diamonds hands, right? So not that many. And then he has hands like um, Jack-10 still, 10-9, Jack-10 off still, 10-9, maybe Queen-10, um, Pocket-9s. Um, so yeah, it's maybe Pocket-5s, Pocket-6s, maybe an A6 double gutter type hand. So how should we play against that range? And I think this is why Flopzilla would be useful. I think it's a very useful tool for like, what is the structure of this range? What does this range look like? So 10 of diamonds, 7 of diamonds, 4 of hearts. 10 of diamonds, 7 of diamonds, 4 of hearts. 8 of diamonds, ace of clubs. So if we're going to do hands like this, and I'm not trying to get it perfect, it's not really possible anyways. Um, and eight suited, pocket eights, pocket nines, um, pocket sixes maybe, um, eight seven suited, maybe, we'll throw in like six five suited to represent all straights, and then um, I'll do any of these with a diamond, so da da, so all hands with a diamond. And the ace are going to call a turn, I think. 
shit. And um, what else do we have? Missing something for sure. Uh, maybe the occasional 9-8. And I feel like I for sure have to miss something. Uh, Ace-8 suited, that improves that. Ace-7 suited. Maybe even ace four suited, ace six suited for that double gutter. So, proves a lot of his hand. So if we look at his range, none of his range is air, except for like occasionally he has like a, maybe we'll give him that. That's pretty ambitious, but yeah, I don't think he really has that that often. So he has like no unpaired hands. He has a range where like half of it's like middle pair so 23 plus 23 percent half of his range is about middle pair and then the other half is about top pair plus which i'm not really too interested in targeting so what's the bet size so if half his range is middle pair and that's the hands we want to target what's the bet size you want to choose for that so you want to choose a bet size where your opponent can only fold like a third of the time so your opponent can only fold a third of the time if we end up about half potting it. So it might go a little bit bigger. So like somewhere between half and two thirds gets you around there. So now you're playing a strategy where he has, where he's supposed to defend those hands, but you're picking a bet size where, yeah. So you're picking a bet size where he's supposed to defend those hands, and folding those hands becomes a mistake, right? So if you bet full pot he only has to defend half his range. So now if he folds all those hands and just calls like top pair plus, he can even fold a little bit of top pair, he's making a good play. And you're not exploiting him. You know, you, you bet he, you bet full pot here, he folds king 10, you didn't make any money. So you want to bet between half and two thirds. Do you think that will get enough folds? Do you think you can represent value hands for that size? is the question because sometimes you bet that size and it doesn't make sense so what would it make sense for us to go for value for that size right so i think it does i think we have a bunch of hands you know what value hands make sense for that size we want to do that with hands that aren't really that strong or hands that are trying to induce bluffs right so I don't really want to try and induce bluffs here for this guy, especially we're not playing like high six cash. I'm not expecting like the bluff raises, but if your opponent's good, maybe you want to try and induce with like top of your range to balance. But the way I would do this versus a opponent I didn't give credit for bluff raising is I'd just take my two pair type of hands, hands that hands that just beat his 10x. So any hand that beats a 10x, so like a pretty good ace. I think I would take if I had a ace of diamonds jack or better. Ace of diamonds jack or any two pair. I have plenty of two pair to go into there. So that would be my strategy there. And if my opponent wants a bluff raise when he like reps nothing, like what is he going to try and rep bluff raising? Um, like a flush that check, flush draw that checked the flop, just called the turn and then raised the river. Like it's, he knows he's not going to get any respect there. So we're not going to get bluffed, so it would make sense. I think he could find those value hands in my range and then end up folding a 10. So that would be the sizing I choose. The other route you can go, and this is kind of fun, if you want to try and make him fold like two pair, you want to play like a big size strategy, make him fold two pair plus, for example, so if you played a strategy where if you get him to fold all two pairs, you get him to fold 85% of his range, right? So if you chose a 3x pot strategy, for example, you only need to fold about 75% of the time. And you have plenty of hands that want to go for the 3x pot. Your opponent never has a flush, basically. You have all the flushes, and your jack-9 is the nuts, right? Your jack nine is effectively the nuts unless your opponent has the occasional like five four diamonds, right? So that is a strategy you can choose as well. So we can go um, 
And this also gives him a bit too many flushes, right? Because I did this wrong, so it has like ace six of diamonds, ace four of diamonds for him, which he doesn't have. So you can go for a three x pot strategy with your nutted hands and throw in some bluffs there. Um, not sure what hands you would want, or you can go for this half pot to two thirds strategy, and this is where Flopzilla really comes into play. Like you can target in different ways. Um, and yeah, so I ended up going for the pot size strategy, which is not the right play. And he ends up calling with like a hand like a6, and yeah, I need him to fold that type of hand for to make this play work. And I don't think he's gonna fold. So not a good play, Pastero. So two key things on this hand. Um, one is if you think he'll fold a 10 for a small size, I really like that play, and then if you don't, I like going for the big size. And the way I kind of calculate it, right, is like, if you bet pot, you bet $15 to win $15, that's like a straight up bet, or 15 big blinds to win 15 big blinds, it's like a straight up even bet, you need to fold half the time if you're bluffing, right? If you bet double that, you need in the fold, um, you know, you bet two times the pot, that's not an equal bet. You're risking 30 to 115. You need the fold two out of three times just to break even. Right? If you did the math, let's say he folded twice, right? You would win 15 big blinds twice. So that's 30 big blinds. And then he calls the third time. The third time you'd lose your 30 big blinds, right? So 15 plus 15 is 30. It's 30 in losses. I mean, 30 in wins. And then you bet 30 and he calls the last time. And you lose, uh, you lose the 30 big blinds back. And then for half pot, you're risking seven to win 15. You need on the fold only a third of the time, right? Because he folds once, you win 15 big blinds. He calls the next two times, you lose seven and a half big blinds twice. That's 15 big blinds. So, anyways, we'll go to the next hand. All right, here's a hand where I make a pretty basic mistake. But I think it's worth going over. So our opponent ISOs the f likely weak player. Um, and I just call Jack. I think this is a very clear 3 bet out of position. Let me close these windows. Um, even though we're deep, our Jacks are clearly strong enough. And then when he 4 bets, that really sucks. But we'll just have to deal with that problem if it happens. Uh, maybe fold, maybe call. Depends on sizing, timing, stuff like that. But I think our hand is plenty strong enough and we're out of position, so. And then, yeah, I don't want to keep this guy in the pot and be out of position versus two players. I don't think that's a great play. So our opponent bets, and we have the option to call or raise. I think this hand is a very clear raise. Sure, he can have us beat sometimes, but I think we need to call and gain protection. I think it um, be a difficult board for him to kind of fuck with us or bluff or do anything. <clears throat> I think uh, it's a very clear raise. We called, which I think is a pretty big mistake. And um, he bets the turn, I think. So can we jam the turn? So here's the problem. So he's bet... You guys kind of know his hand, but he's bet in the flop into two people, and he didn't bet that small, he bet like 40%, one of the, those guys is a fish, and then now he bets this turn, two-thirds, so that feels like pretty strong, um, to the point where I'm not going to raise here. He still has queens, kings, aces, if I check raise now, I don't know if I, the main question is do I stack pocket nines, pocket tens, um, pocket sevens or something like that. I don't really think so. He also has hands like ace five, pocket eights, maybe even pocket deuces, although that's kind of unlikely. Um, so yeah, I went for the call as played. And then we get this river. Um, pretty tough. So the first question I'm thinking of, and it's important what your first question is when thinking about this hand, is does he ever value bet worse? Or, you know, what are his bluffs? So, would he go pocket 10s, pocket 9s here? I 
don't really think so. Like, would he bet the size if we were to bet? What size would he bet if he was going to bet that hand? And, yeah, I don't think he goes for that. Um, so I have, we look at our range, we have some potentially 5x, we have potentially, like, maybe we're, maybe we have 3, 4 suited, I don't know. Um, we have uh, pocket 6s, pocket 8s, I think are very realistic hands, so... I don't think he would bet that big with the 9s or 10s, so we're not beating any value bets. And then, let's count the... I mean, maybe a few combos of pocket 10s, but pretty rare. Now let's count... The next thing I want to do is count the value combos. Like, there's pocket queens, pocket kings, pocket aces. That's 18, right there. Pocket 8s, pocket 6s, that's another 6, so we're at 24. And, um, I wouldn't give him 9, 7 of hearts. He had 9, 7 of hearts, but... I'm not even going to put that in his range. But yeah, we'll say 9, 7 hearts. <laughs> so like 25, 26. And then, um, yeah, so it's like 26 combos of value, but like, what are the bluffs we're going to find? It's just like two hard hands, I think, can follow through on the turn. Um, maybe find something with a 10, 9 suited. I think that would be kind of cool, blocking pocket 10s, pocket 9s. Um, but that's really it. And, um, uh, I don't really even know if he follows through on the flop or the turn all that often with those, so I think it becomes a pretty clear fold. He has, like, 25 value combos, you need about 10 or so combos of bluffs, and I don't think there's that many, I don't think he follows through enough. Um, I think pocket queens is a call, because now you beat pocket jacks, and that really shifts things. Um... But yeah, I don't think pocket jacks are good enough. Um, not enough two hard draws. There's like 9, 10 of hearts through a sex of hearts. That isn't a pair. So that's like 10, 15 combos. But I don't think he always follows through. People don't like bluffing miss hearts on the river. And then there's like 9, 10 suited if he finds that. But I don't give people credit for like finding 9, 10 suited. So... Yeah, I think we could have folded that one. Alright, this isn't that deep stacked of a hand, but I think it's a... I think the river illustrates a pretty good example here. So 998, when he calls in position, I think pretty high check with pocket aces. We don't need much protection. All like the draws and bad turns, bad turn and river combo runouts makes us want to play a kind of check call strategy here. Um, he checks back, turns a five of hearts, which ends up being a fairly good card for him, I guess. He has generally more flush draws if he didn't bet the flop. I think he wouldn't bet the flop with like ace X of hearts, like low king six of hearts type hands, maybe if he had something like that. So not too many flush draws, but then he has like six, seven suited, pocket fives. So yeah, um, we check again, and he bets, and um, I end up check raising, which I think is pretty close in tweener. So like, he can have hands like pocket sevens, pocket sixes. If we're looking at his range, like an eight x delay, see about ten eight suited, jack eight suited, ace eight suited type hands. Um, maybe ace five suited, maybe a delay bluff here with like king queen off, king of hearts. King Jack, King of Hearts type hands, so plenty of hands that are worth check raising against, and there's only like six, seven pocket fives, and like the, um, the like ace, you know, the flushes that he checked back. So we check raise, he calls. So think about what his range for calling. So I think that's pretty key here. So I think his range is like pocket sixes, pocket sevens with a heart. I don't even know if like many of his 8x calls the check raise, maybe an 8-7, more than like an ace-8 suited, maybe a jack-10 suited, uh, but that kind of, you know, if you look at the full story with jack-10 suited, maybe that bets the flop, um, maybe it doesn't bet the turn, and I don't know, maybe it isn't too happy calling a check raise on a 3-flush board, so there really isn't too much we're ahead of at this point on that river especially, he could have a queen 10 with a heart as well, I don't know if he calls that offsuit, he's kind of loose, right, so queen 10 offsuit, one heart seems reasonable, 
10-7 suited, possible too. So yeah, there isn't too much to get value from, then he does that. And um, I went for the thin value check raise, but if you ask the main question, what if his worst value bets here? Is he really going to take a queen jack one heart and try and value bet it here? Like, and to answer that question, you kind of have to understand what our range is. We just check raise the turn. We're not doing that with a pair that is worse than a jack, right? It's just like maybe not even this hand. It's like queens, kings, aces, jacks type of thing. Like, what is he hoping for when he bets a jack? So he isn't value betting any worse hand for the size. He either just has like some air bluff, you know, king, queen, king of hearts, or he has a better hand. So min raising here just accomplishes absolutely nothing. And this is the spot where I just wasn't clear on what his value range, should, what is, what the bottom of his value bet range would, would be. Um, so this is a mistake that I made then that I definitely wouldn't make now, just by simply understanding what he's going to value bet for that size. And um, yeah, he had ace three hearts, and that's uh, we lost quite a bit more than we should, I guess. All right, this is a cool hand. We raise 8-6 suited UTG, which is certainly on the thin side. Um, we get this flop, and um, we can play this a few different ways. So we have this big kind of nut advantage, so the way I think about nut advantage is how many more nutted hands do I have that he doesn't have. So we both have pocket fours, so that's not an advantage. I have pocket jacks, he probably doesn't. So that's an advantage. We both have ace jack, so that's not really an advantage there. I have pocket aces. I have like ace queen, ace king, but those aren't that nutty this deep actually. So our, like our nut advantage actually isn't that big. Um, it's just um, three combos of ace ace, and then ace king, ace queen is a nice advantage. But I don't know if that's like a hand that you want to bet all the money with, and that gains a lot of EV, so like, I think there's a huge EV difference between like pocket fours and ace king, just because ace king really happy, to, pocket fours really have to get all the money in. Um, so I was going to say bet big, but I don't think this is like a bet big board. Um, I think this is just a bet range, bet a third pot, you bet a half pot for range here. Um, I think our range advantage is pretty massive, so we did that, we went in the middle. So, on these like three high card boards, especially when you're in early position, it's hard for you to find bluffs, right? Because your um, pocket queen, like almost everything is a pair or a straight or something, you know? So you kind of have to get creative with the bluffs. Um, so, the hands I would find, so we have our two spade hands, like our suited connector two spade hands, so that isn't that big of a that isn't that many hands. There's 10-9 suited, 10-8 suited. Um, you know, that, that isn't that much. And then that's basically about it. I guess you could have a pocket tens. I think pocket tens is a reasonable, reasonable one. If you add up all those combos, you maybe reach about 15-20. Whereas like our value range is going to be um, ace-jack, ace-king, queen-ten suited, pocket-jacks, pocket-aces, pocket-kings, pocket four. So we have like a 40 combo range of like really strong hands, right? And then we just have like the 10, 15 combo range of bluffs. Like that, that isn't very good. And we need to find more bluffs, right? So what you end up doing is um, you have to start digging a bit deeper because if anything, I think people overfold these spots. So if you're under bluffing and people are overfolding, then they just exploited you, right? So you want to make sure you're bluffing enough. And on the turn, you can if we're choosing a big size strategy, which I think we should, I think we should go about pot size here, because I think our nut advantage got a bit bigger with now us having pocket kings. Um, well, I guess he has queen 10 offsuit, so you actually don't want to go that big. All right, so here's kind of a big thing. So your opponent has queen 10 off, all queen 10 off, and we don't. He doesn't fold pre, he doesn't three bet at pre, and he doesn't really check raise flop. This is queen 10 of spades. So he has all those and we don't. So 
you don't want a size that big with your jack jack ace king ace jack type pounds so it's actually more of like a two thirds three quarters type strategy um, so the hands you would want to bluff with are your pocket tens which you know are nut blockers but you have to dig a bit deeper um, the hand I wouldn't take this hand I think this hand's pretty garbage I would take a pocket pair like fives or sixes have crappy showdown value and then we can hit a set at least this hand is drawing dead so I wouldn't bluff this hand I don't think that's a good idea we do check back just leave me alone we check back and I end up doing this which I think makes just not very much sense so let's think about his range for calling the flop bet I think he has a bunch of jack x that defended pre he has um, king queen king ten type hands he has ace x type hands and then he has um, hands where he's trapping here in this range so maybe he's trapping his ace four maybe he's trapping his queen ten maybe he has king four suited or maybe even king four off I don't know so if you bet this size you know, you only need him to fold a quarter of the time, but, and that would mean, I guess if he folded every single jack, this would be a mediocre bet. Or if you thought he defended, like, all his pocket tens through pocket fives. That's kind of the crux of the hand. Like, if you think he defends, like, deuces through tens here on the flop, now you're going to, for this size, you can get deuces to tens the fold which is like 40 50 combos and then maybe some jack x to fold so you end up getting him to fold like 30 40 percent of his range and you only need him to fold like 25 percent of his range a bit less because we went a bit less than one third so i think this bet is okay and I think it could make sense for us to do this with an ace. So the next question is, you know, does this, okay, we could do this bet, but we have to represent a value hand. Well, if we had an ace, I think it's very reasonable to go this size, you know, and try and get a call from a king and a jack and all that. So, and to kind of protect against maybe the check raises and stuff. So I think it's actually not, that bad I think it's pretty reasonable um, I don't think it's a great play but maybe a little bit bigger um, get some more jack x folds but I, I think it's okay actually I didn't like it in hindsight but yeah I like it so we'll conclude part one with that video hope you guys enjoyed and part two more deep stack stuff